What is up everyone? My name is Michael Pohl with Bay Area Aquatics and today we're going to be talking about how to make DIY glass lids for your home aquariums. Alright, so recently I started a new project that you guys will hear about soon on the channel, um, but I needed to turn a couple of aquariums sideways, which is going to tip it off for some of you guys. But, you know, the standard glass lids open kind of like a hot dog. And when they're sideways, that makes it kind of annoying. It's hard to share a light across multiple tanks and it just, it gets really, really annoying. So I need a lid that slid kind of more hamburger uh, to open up on the small side, if that makes sense. Now I looked around online and Simply Betta's video is the one that I liked the best. Um, I know she said someone else did it. And when I went to that video, someone else had done it before it. And so I don't know who was the original like creator of this, um, but it's a good idea. The lids look really nice and everyone has their own little twist and spin on it. So, you know, it kind of changes depending on who you talk to. So before we get started, I'm going to leave a whole list of all the materials that I use down in the description below, uh, mainly from Home Depot and then Amazon for a couple of little pieces like that. Another thing I want to note is that I am making these for a 10 gallon aquarium today. Um, you can make them. I've seen them on 20 longs, 29s, 20s, um, uh, 37s, all, even though that's the same footprint as a 29. Um, but yeah, so I've seen them on multiple aquariums. Obviously, you got to change the measurements just a little bit. But for today, I'm going to be showing you how to make it for a 10 and giving you the measurements for a 10 gallon, standard 10 gallon. Now, the first thing you're going to need is two pieces of glass. Now, you need a 9.5 by 12 is what most people use. If you're getting glass custom made, I would actually go nine and a half by 11 just so there's not as much overlap and the lid opens up a little more. Um, but either one will work. A lot of people don't do the custom glass stuff, so a lot of people go to Home Depot and buy 10 inch by 12 inch glass. That's what I decided to do. I've never cut glass before. Um, if you haven't before, I don't recommend it. It's not the easiest thing to do. It's not super hard. I was able to do it eventually, um, but I, I went through quite a bit of glass before I actually got to the point where I was able to get a decent enough cut. So if you have the ability to get custom glass done, it's not that much more expensive. And if you've never cut glass before, you're probably going to go through enough glass breaking glass that it'll just be cheaper to go buy the custom made stuff. Um, I know places like Ace Hardware tend to cut glass usually. Sometimes Home Depot and Lowe's will depending on your location, but it really depends. The next thing you're going to need, and this is arguably the more important part because the other materials can kind of change, uh, you're going to need FRP molding. Um, it's technically a tile molding. It's super cheap, super flexible. Um, it comes in, I think, eight foot or nine foot sections at Home Depot. Um, it's like two or three dollars for the section of it. Um, and it's flexible. So I was able to fit it in the back seat of my four door commuter car. I, you don't need a truck or an SUV or anything to take it. Um, I didn't even need to use the pass through in my car. I was able to just kind of bend it and not break it. And super, super flexible stuff. Um, super easy to use. When I got to Home Depot, there were four different types, all the same price. Um, the one you want is the, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, Oh, why can I not see it? Oh, the outside corner style. So I, I don't remember what the other styles were. I took a picture, um, but I had to go back and look it up and make sure I understood the right way. And it's because you need that specific shape so the glass can kind of slide in underneath it. And then you can have the top layer to kind of let the glass slide back and forth. Now, depending on how cosmetically pleasing you want this to look, um, I went ahead and spray painted mine. I just got a 98 cent can of spray paint, um, just flat black from Home Depot, whatever the cheapest stuff they had was, um, and painted you know, one coat on one side, one coat on the other, made sure the ends were hit. Um, and it looks really nice and it blends in with the trim. It's not required, but I do have all of my breeding tanks in a like semi-publicly viewed area. So I wanted them to look a little nicer. I didn't want the white kind of trim going through there. Um, so I went ahead and spray painted them black. It took an extra couple of minutes, dried quickly, not a big deal. You're also gonna need some sort of scissors or pocket knife or box cutter or something. Um, I was able to cut these with scissors, sharp scissors, but scissors. Um, it was a little challenging, but a, a box cutter or pocket knife will work too. And for a 10 gallon, you're gonna need two pieces that are 19 and a half inches each. The last thing that I got, and again, this is optional, um, was some double-sided sticky handles off of Amazon. I'll leave the links to the ones that I use down below. Some people use like the 3M hooks, and then they just grab the little hook thing and use that as a handle. Um, I didn't really like that. I have a couple and I tried it and I just didn't like the feel of it. You can buy the actual aquarium hinges or the actual aquarium handles, but those are usually like five, six dollars a piece from what I was seeing. And I, I don't really care that much. I just needed something to grab and hold. And I actually prefer the look of the handles I got over like the standard aquarium handle anyways. I think they look a little nicer. 
And that's pretty much it. It's really easy to do. Um, after you get all your pieces, it's pretty much just assembling them. So if you're gonna go cut your own glass, that's probably the hardest part. Other than that, if you're not gonna cut your glass, it's pretty much buy the pieces, assemble them, put them together. Um, so you're basically gonna take one piece of glass, shove the molding in the little tiny piece at the bottom on each side, um, and then you just put that in the tank, and then the other piece just sits on top and slides back and forth. Um, it's super, super simple. Uh, I, I don't really know like how else to, to show it. It's just it's really plug and play, but they're genius. They look really nice on my lids too. Um, I actually like the look of them better than the other lids that I have because I don't have the beam in the middle. Um, like I said, if you're getting glass cut, I would probably get it cut a little bit shorter, like 11 inches or so, 11, maybe 10 and a half. Um, you want it longer than 10, so there's an overlap, but um, I would like it where, you know, I could open the lid up a little more. These ones, it kind of has a lot of overlap and a lot of waste. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, I'm not the first one to do a video on this, um, but I think they're good. I think they're, you know, useful, and I think they're cool and fairly cheap to make, actually. I, I, they're about the same price as if you're going to buy, like, uh, um, some polycarbonate or something like that. Um, and they look significantly nicer in my opinion. So definitely worth looking into. So if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you didn't, you know what to do. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and get the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. As always, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.